Hello everybody and welcome back to All The Mods 9. In the previous episode we got set up with our refined storage system and we filled out this area with drawers filled with all of our items that we've gathered so far. In between episodes I went through and upgraded a few of these into compacting drawers. Um, unfortunately uh, these actually require external storages each so uh yeah that's <laughs> definitely a problem because we do not have enough power in order to actually um, have all of these drawers uh, connected up at the same time but i think that's a problem for another day as today what i want to do is to upgrade my absolutely pathetic create setup into something uh worthy of being used so i want to set up a new building over on this side of the island trying to overhaul it and make it look pretty good. We'll have water wheels in the water, maybe looking a little bit like wave generators or or something. I'm, I'm not too sure right now. Oh, and uh, by the way, in between episodes, I did go into the nether. I spent probably six hours there just looking for a netherite smithing upgrade template. And yeah, I was actually able to upgrade my armor into netherite. I also used some armor trims and made it look a little bit fancier. And uh, yeah, I think I'm looking pretty nice right now. Um, I also did a few more things in between episodes. Uh, I got my villagers set up in these easy trader thingies. Um, I also found some cocoa. I upgraded my smelting system over here to use emerald furnaces. And I also made a little bit of a slime farm here. Now, if you'll remember from the first part of this series, uh, there was a few slugs on the beach that actually dropped slime. Uh, so yeah, this is the result of those. Um, they don't need to be killed or anything. They just they just naturally drop it. So um, I have a couple of them in there, and this has been running uh, for quite a while, probably a few hours. We got about a stack, but that's all right for um, an early game system like this. I also went through and added... Um, a few more of the Ars Nouveau trees. Um, I did some exploration and I found the flourishing and vexing uh, archwood trees. And so yeah, I just planted those down. Um, these ones actually have bastion fruits on them, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what these are used for really, but they look nice, so we have them there. Um, I also used our mage light spell to creates uh lights throughout the trees i thought that it looked a little nicer a little more magical in this area so enough of a recap let's jump right into things as i zoom in really far into my face
And after a few hours of work, it's finally done. So I just want to take a minute to sort of do like a little bit of a tour of the details on the build. Uh, so starting at the base here, we have sort of a polished tough, uh, tough pillar, sort of a uh, sort of a base for the actual build itself. And then we just have some cobblestone, cobblestone bricks, uh, acacia leaves, acacia log fences as sort of just detailing. So the overall sort of theming of this build is almost an old uh, power plant or maybe like a fishing facility. Maybe it was a fishing facility first and then converted into a power plant. Uh, something like that. Either way though, here's the back of the build. And yes, it is actually finished. Actually enjoy doing the backs of builds. Yeah, you can see inside this little... Uh, I'm not really sure what to call it. Maybe it's like a water shed thingy. Uh, we have our water wheels. And if I just hop over here... Uh, we have water that is being brought in from the ocean and used to sort of move the uh, the water wheels. And then down here we have like a little area for the water to uh, presumably get uh, sent back out into the ocean and cycled anew. So we have a little bit of a, uh, a viewing platform from up here. And then here's the inside. I didn't get time to do this. Um, I think it'll be better to do the interior after we uh, after we get all of our machines inside anyway. So let's talk a little bit about the second floor now. Um, I used uh, oak and I think those are oak brick planks. Um, and then I don't remember what the uh, the sort of ones with the lines are called. Uh, but that acts as sort of the base walls of the second floor. And then we have logs in the corner with uh, uh, with ropes around parts of them, just to add a little bit more structure to the build itself. Then we have uh, oak stockades um, acting as sort of a transition into uh, from the acting as a bit of a transition from the oak logs in the corner um, into the wall itself, just adding a little bit more detail overall. And then we use. Uh, framed slab edges for this part. Uh, this is basalt, and then this one, I don't remember. It's the same as the ones on the corner. Um, it just adds a little bit of a break between the top and the bottom, and I actually really like the design on it. And then for the windows, we just have, I believe those are smooth tough, or no, wait, that's sh uh, shale, uh, which is the same that we used for the roof, as well as for this sort of blue bear, uh, blue border here then we just use those stockades again to act as a support for these little uh um i'm not too sure what to call these like little window covers or mini roofs i guess <laughs> uh but below the stockades themselves we actually are using sticks uh which are actually placeable um i don't have any on me but uh yeah that's that's pretty cool how they uh how they look and the roof itself is pretty standard we're just using shale uh brick stairs and just building up in a straight pattern and then towards the top here it gets a little more shallow using slabs and it gives it a little bit more of a rounded appearance which i really like so i think it's time to talk about what i want inside the build itself uh, the plan for this build is sort of to be our create workshop so we'll have all of our basic machines our mechanical presses our mixers and a few other uh, helpful machines that'll allow us to build pretty unique things and yeah, help us get started with Create. By the way, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. Today's question of the day is, have you used the Create mod before? And if so, what's your favorite machine from that mod? In terms of power for this build though, um, Honestly, I don't think I'm going to use the water wheels that we have here. It's just going to be a little bit awkward actually pulling power from this. We could try it, but I think overall this is more for aesthetics. And just quickly, the reason for that is um, only, I think it's only like two or three of these blocks are actually powered on the water wheel itself. If you want the full utilization of the water wheel, it needs to have water flowing over it and under it just like that, uh, which 
yeah, I don't think it's going to look good here. So. so we'll probably just end up hiding our power generation under the ground. So let's go ahead and get started building what we need to do for this uh, for this build. So I think for our power generation, we're just going to stick with regular old uh, small water wheels. We'll probably want five in total, so I'll make some more shafts. Uh, we're going to need these anyway. Here we go. There's five. We already have a mechanical press out here, and I am actually going to uh, tear the system down. And yeah, we don't we don't really need this anymore. So we can just move it into our new area. I'm also going to make a mixer just because we'll probably need that eventually. And we need a basin for that to function properly. And I would actually make a millstone, but we're probably at a point where crushing wheels will actually be pretty much achievable. So uh, we might as well invest in those. And I eventually ended up needing to use the press anyway, so I probably shouldn't have torn it down. And I think the last thing that we're going to need for our basic machines is a deployer. I want to dig down just a little bit here. Uh, we'll go small square with this. And this is where we're going to have our power generation. Uh, this far down should be good for now. And I think I want all of these water wheels to run in this direction. Something like that. Uh, yeah, that should be good. And in order to get these things running at max efficiency, I just want a line of blocks right there. And then we can also cut this part off. Just so that we don't get any water overflowing. Um, that should be good. I think we can walk on these, yep. And we will just uh, start going like that. And you can see them already spinning. Alright, that's all of them up and running now. Um, I think if we block that off, that should be good. And yep, that'll fill it in. And coming directly off of this, we do actually want to increase the speed. Now, eventually we can replace this with a with a rotation speed controller, but we don't quite have access to that quite yet. So in order to actually figure out how much power we're generating and using, I'm going to craft a pair of engineer's goggles. We should be able to just right click those on, which we can't. Uh, I think they replace the night goggles. Yep, there we go. So yeah, we'll have to uh, switch those back out, but when we look at one of these water wheels, we can see how much KS, uh, KSC, KSUs that we're producing. And we'll need a machine at the end to figure out how much uh, we're using. And by the way, each of these is producing 256 and we're using 128 currently. So we have a we have quite a bit of stress capacity currently, um, at least at our current speed. But if we were to speed it up any further, uh, we will use more. So I just added one more small cog wheel and you can see now at this speed, each machine is going to be using a water wheel. Which is fine for now. Eventually, though, we will want to replace this with a steam engine. That way, things run a lot more smoothly and we have um, a lot more room for expansion. So quickly, I'm just going to figure out where I want everything, how I want the power to be run, and where everything will go. So, yeah, we'll come back after that. All right, so I think I found a decent place to put all of this. Um, we just have uh, some shafts and some gearboxes uh, running from where we have our power. And we'll just have everything sort of lined up here for now. Now, one thing, though, is that the mixer actually requires a, uh, a gear to actually spin it. So we're going to have to finagle things here a little bit. Go like that. Um, we're going to need more gearboxes. So we can place one there, and yeah, we'll need one on the other side as well. Something like that. Get some shafts in between, and that'll start spinning it. Awesome. There we go, and we can place the basin down, and anything that we put in here that can be mixed will uh, will start to be mixed. 
And actually, I jumped the gun here just a little bit. What I want is the deployer next to the uh, press, actually. And we'll make a, another depot for that. And we might be able to squeeze this in a little bit tighter this time around. All right, I think that that's the best that we're going to do with as few parts as possible. Um, it is a little bit unfortunate that the mechanical mixer requires a cogwheel where pretty much everything else just requires a... a uh, a shaft input but that's how it goes sometimes so um yeah we have our setup here uh working pretty well now hmm i didn't think about this but usually the deployer requires an additional space here so i'm going to just give this a little test it might have to be moved up though now that i'm thinking about it a bit more here let's go like that and we break those Get one place there, and a site in the hand itself. Okay, yep, it works like that. Nice. So this little setup here is meant more as uh, sort of our daily use, like if we ever need something pressed, or if we ever need like a stack of, uh, of andesite casings or anything, we can go over to this system. But in the future, we might need things mass produced, uh, so we will have individual setups for that. So what I want to do next now is actually get set up with an automatic crushing system, uh, which first is going to require a, uh, a little bit more of a setup. So we're going to require, I believe it's going to be 21 mechanical crafters. Uh, each of these requires a brass casing, which is just a brass ingot deployed on a log, similar to how we make the andesite casings. All right, for now, I'm just going to make a stack of brass, strip some logs, and deploy the brass onto that. All right, and I think I have everything that I need now. Let's just get everything deposited first. And that should be 21 mechanical crafters. So this is the recipe for the crushing wheels, by the way. And I do realize now it says 21 here. We're going to have to set these up in a pattern so that we can actually make the crushing wheels. And I think at least for now, I'm just going to set these up here. Uh, this is probably just going to be a temporary uh, location for these. And yeah, we'll probably get a better setup eventually. Strange that we can't use quark here. Uh, maybe we can. Nope, unfortunately we can't. All right, should have these last guys in place now. And we'll also need a wrench, so that's why I just made those plates. And so yeah, for this, each of the mechanical crafters has to be pointing in basically the same direction it all needs to lead to one place so if i just right click that you can see that the little uh almost like a belt uh starts to place or starts to face towards the center so i want all of these facing the center uh so this will just take a minute all right and i think i did that correctly sometimes it's a little bit hard to tell uh, but we'll find out when we actually create it uh, now we just need some power over here, which shouldn't be too difficult. We already have a gearbox here. Uh, let's just put that... Something like that. It'll be a little bit weird looking. Um, so we go cogwheel there, cogwheel there, cogwheel there. And yep, I knew that that was going to happen. We're using way too much of our KSU. All right, so I just added a few more water wheels here. Um, we can definitely add a lot more, but this should this should do for now. Um, I'll have to fix the sand in the future here shortly, but I just wanted to make sure that we do indeed have enough power to have this uh, this run, which we do. Nice. And I think I have everything that we need in order to actually craft up our first uh, set of crushing wheels. Uh, so we place our andesite alloy in the outside there. Then I believe it's planks here. 
with the stone in the middle and if yep if we did it correctly it'll start assembling and forming into a crushing wheel so now that we have our crushing wheels i think it's time to figure out a decent place for these to go and yeah what we want to use them for and by the way these things look absolutely hilarious in your hand so crushing wheels are used to obviously crush things down and we can actually get a ton of useful things from this. If we crush down gold ore, for example, we'll get the crushed raw gold, um, as well as some gold nuggets. If we crush down diamond ore, we get a chance for some extra diamonds as well. Um, we get experience for certain ores as well. Um, and apparently we get cobbled skulk from diamond. That's interesting. Uh, one thing that's really important though is blaze rods. We get a ton of uh, blaze powder from those. Initially, what I want these to be used for is more of a general use, similar to how we have our machines in the background. We're not going to quite automate everything, uh, but we will have a basically an auto crushing wheel set up. All right, so we were running a little bit low on time in the episode, so I just went ahead and built up the system myself. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just show it off to you guys now. So basically we have additional water wheels down here. I wanted the system to be independent from the rest of it, uh, just because I feel like this one's going to be uh, using a lot more power and using a lot more power uh, constantly. So... Um, yeah, we have our crushing wheels here. Uh, we have a pretty messy gearbox situation in the back. I could probably do better. Um, yeah, I just, uh, for some reason, I couldn't quite think of how to make this better. So uh, this is how it is for uh, for now. Uh, so yeah, up in the top, we have our input. If we just throw our gold in there, it'll eventually get crushed down and put through this chute down into the barrel. The problem with a system like this is that every time more items get put into it, it sort of resets itself. Uh, so it's uh, it's going to take a while to get items crushed down. Um, if we had more of a constant uh, inflow, this would take a little less time overall. Yeah, here we go. We have our first little bit of crushed raw gold. Um, I believe there's extra... Uh, apparently the actual raw gold itself is only a one-to-one, -one, uh, but we do get the nuggets of experience, which is nice. If we want to get a decent supply of gold, we'll probably want to go out and find Okram, uh, which has a 20% chance of dropping uh, gold with a 20% chance of dropping gold nuggets. It's going to be that way for quite a few of the... Uh, ores but i think that that's all right um this definitely gives us a chance to use our silk touch a little bit more and then just bring it back into here but anyway that is all the time we're gonna have for today's episode thank you all so much for watching i'll catch you next time peace